No dice. Aiden Hill gives up two cheap goals in VGK's 5-3 to three loss to the Lightning. More coming up next right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco and Chris Garlic from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. We appreciate you doing so. Your team every day. And please make sure that you subscribe to our Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use the promo code Lockdown for $20 off of your first purchase. I just remember, Chris, uh, somebody said on one of our average seats, right? So on one of our shows on WTF on What the Friday, um, who was that? At Skynet VGK, Dasco the Fiasco is not an entertainer. He's not a podcaster. He's the court jester without the goofy hat. So I am the court jester with the goofy hat. I just want to set the record straight here. VGK with the loss against uh, Tampa last night. A post-game narrative, Chris. VGK deserved better. Did they really? The Golden Knights still need to clean up so many parts of their game. And Alec Martinez, after the defeat, he summarized it best, I felt. Far too many mental mistakes. Tampa, they capitalized, and we didn't pretty much summarizes it right sure i mean the golden knights did some things well in this game you look at the difference in the shots and stuff like that and one of the things that was mentioned is it's the formula right golden knights i think allowed 20 shots on goal and they scored three goals i guess theoretically the perspective is they're going to win more times and they're going to lose that game but i think we're talking about the same lightning team that got out shot what 50 to 16 one day tony or something crazy like that and they still won florida Yes, good point yeah. against Florida. So, to 16. so that's the first thing. And here's why this team doesn't deserve better right now. I'm going to go through four of the five goals very, very quickly here. The first goal, Eichel on the boards. I don't know what's happening with the puck, but he can't control it on the power play. Shea Theodore fails to read what's happening. And all of a sudden, here comes Tampa on a two on O. Oh. Theodore at the blue line is having trouble reading plays. This reminds me of season one and season two. The next goal that is given up, Shea Theodore takes a strain. Like, they have the play stopped. McNabb forces the forces, I think it was Kucherov, to the middle, but in a safe spot. Theodore's gap on the play, in my my opinion, was very poor. You get a shot. You get a rebound. Theodore doesn't go to the front of the net. He's on the side of the net. There's a rebound. McNabb doesn't realize that there's that Declare is right there in the middle. And again, where is Stevenson in all? Or, or Ch- Ch- sorry, Chandler. Yeah, Stevenson. Where is Stevenson all, in all of this? The third goal. The third goal. This is bad. I mean, Aiden Hill gave up a terrible goal right off his chest. It shouldn't go in. But no one's talking about Chandler Stevenson not doing anything on the board battle before that's. And then the final goal, the icing situation. Hill could have played that puck. Hill should have saved that puck. Haig should have obviously beat his man in the race and the icing. And then just to ice everything, Shea Theodore wanted to make one more terrible play and couldn't win a race when he was when he was spotted about a 20-foot lead as far as where Shea Theodore is lined up on the faceoff and where the Tampa Bay, uh, I think it was Braden Point, again, who you, t- Tony, you commented, Braden Point crushes the Golden Knights. I think he had a three-point game last night. Yeah, two, two goals uh, on the night. And another evening, Chris, in which VGK gives up multiple goals in the third period. Three goals. Three goals in the third. This is becoming an epidemic for the VGK. (laughs) It's it's, it's a circumstance. It's a circumstance. After the All-Star break, I'm counting. It's got to be at least five games where they've given up three or more goals in the third period. Is this fatigue? What's going on in the third period? 
Yeah, um, it's fatigue. That, right? It's it's mental. It's coaching. It's all sorts of things. Like I think there is. Yeah, the goalies primarily Aiden Hill as of late, but the goalies have had their issues in the third period. And it's just, it's everything right now. And I think a concern that I have going back since the all-star break, like trying to look at the teams that, that the golden Knights have beaten what they beat Edmonton right off the break. And that was actually a nice game, right? Um, they lost that game to Carolina. If I recall, they beat the Preds, they beat uh, the Sharks back to back. whoop de doo They lose to the Leafs at home. They get crushed that game. That road trip wasn't very good. They beat the Leafs, but otherwise they dropped games to Ottawa, Buffalo and Columbus come back at home, lose to Vancouver, barely beat Detroit, barely beat Detroit. Um, terrible game against Seattle that they're fortunate to win. Then you got the Flames game, the Devils game. They barely get by a team playing on the backside of a back to back traveling cross country. But that was a really, really good game, according to TV. And it was, it was a really good game. Um, and then the lightning game last night. So this is an epidemic. This is this isn't a circumstance. This is an excuse. This is an epidemic right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to talk more about who, again, scored a goal in the playoffs on the Karen play off of the back wall. Liveliest boards in the game. VGK does not utilize them. Oh, we saw yeah. point scoring that goal, Kucherov, and then point right in position. I, do you remember, was it Florida? I was trying to dig into some notes, and I just could not remember who ran that same play, but the Golden Knights should definitely set that play up and they should utilize it off the boards. That back wall is so live. Uh, we also saw for VGK, Ben Hutton scores a goal last night. Uh, very, Nick bright Hague, very bright yeah, spot. Very bright spot. Nick, a lot of traffic and bodies hit the floor, bodies at the ice in front of the net. Uh, Nick Cage inserted when Alex Martinez, Alex Petrangelo, Oh, my goodness. Alex Petrangelo was taken <laughs> ill last night. I pulled a Chris right there, Alex and Alec. But Petrangelo, Petro, was out. I mean, listen, let's let's try and get some positives here. There were a couple. You mentioned Ben Hutton, Alec Martinez. That that deep pairing is just a spark right now. It's a spark. And, you know, Nick Haig, outside of that icing, I think he was very serviceable last night. So that was good to see him come back and respond well after being being a healthy scratch um march so who is going to be unemployed as of july 1st at 9 a.m pacific time still without a contract you know mm -hmm. interesting point there someone made mention of something regarding march so and that the team is having a hard time you know fitting him in or whatever with the salary we're talking about the same golden knights team that moves mountains at mm -hmm. the trade deadline mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. team can move a friggin mountain for the right situation, the right deal. And these aren't things that take months to build up to. These happen in sometimes a matter of hours or like in the hurdle situation, a few days, possibly. The Gold Knights have now had seven months to work something out with March or so. Like, this is a choice, Tony. This is a choice the Golden Knights are making right yeah, now. We need to be sure. clear about that. It's this like, is a it's, choice. It's like Stamkos and uh, the situation there in Tampa. So they just wait. Sure, yeah, I mean Stamkos, but, but they've been, the end of they've been public about the situation with Stamkos. Yeah, like it's very true. It's almost a foregone conclusion they don't want him back there. Like that. That's just crazy, yeah. asinine to me. But whatever. Right. Um, Eichel, Marcheseau, and Hannafin hit pipe last night. Oh, I want to talk about the empty net goal by Kucherov. Uh, VGK wins the draw, but it's called back, and they called it back rightfully. So. It, it, like, oh, yeah. You had a foul start on the back by both those players. The, right. So everyone's moving around. It's like basketball players in the lane, right? And like, and everything was discombobulated. The horse, the horse bro broke through the gate. You got to restart the race. The horse broke through the gate. Good way to term that because we both like the ponies, except I got killed at San Anita the other day. And then Carlson loses, I think it was his 11th draw. The MVP, Carlson. Did he lose 11 draws? Holy smokes, on the night. So Cassidy, he challenges. I've never heard Cassidy whine. Four and seven, four and seven, four, four and seven. Okay, out 11, of 11. 12, four and seven. Okay, four and seven. Great. That's bad. He's That's just bad. an unbelievable player, 200 feet and losing a lot of draws. Okay, so Cassidy, like sour it. grapes after the game uh, for Kucherov batting down the puck with a high stick. 
No. And you watch that replay. They had a really good angle on one of them. Did not touch the stick. So is this gamesmanship on the part of Cassidy? Uh, Bruce, he's ne- he never whines like this. So you can tell it could be desperation mode, right? For VGK. He said that the play that the players told him that the puck hit the stick. Uh, but I thought maybe he just wanted to, you have to do something at that point, right? I thought it was gamesmanship, perhaps, but no. He really did believe that the puck was batted down by Kucherov with a high stick. I Explain that play and why the challenge there. One, you have nothing to lose. I mean, if you if you win the challenge, you're down one goal with one minute left. If you lose the challenge, you're down two goals with one minute left, and you have a player in the box, the game is over. The game is over either way. You hope to win the challenge. Right. It was not like it. the review took a while. The longer that review took, the more I thought there was a shot that was actually going to get overturned. Um, when you looked at one of the angles, it looked like there might have possibly been a little bit of a graze of the stick. But the north-south angle, I think, was the one that really painted the picture where it was close. Like, it was close. And I could see the players on the ice actually saying, hey, it looked like this might have happened. And then, obviously, whoever is in charge of making the call to initiate the video review did. So, there, not, it wasn't gamesmanship. It was – maybe it was gamesmanship, but it's it's the Hail Mary. Like, okay, this goal gets disallowed. We, we're still in this game, right? So, that was the right challenge, the right thing to do in that circumstance. But, you know, you're also talking about – what we're not talking about is – the William Carlson lost face-off that led to that happening. What we I talked about earlier, but we haven't talked about since we brought it up again, was Shea Theodore spotting Kucherev, or all the way around. Theodore was spotted about 20 feet from where they, they line up on the face-off circle, and Theodore, again, does not have... Uh, is Shea Theodore injured? He's His moves at the blue line are not good, and Isn't that our his third feet segment? do not get moving fast. I think that's our third segment. Again, it is a third segment, but you brought up the goal. It was Theodore. Again, you want to race. I am not the court I'm jester. Teasing. I'm not an entertainer. I'm, I'm not a podcaster. I'm Dasco Fiasco, and I'm the court jester today with the hat. When we return, Aiden Hill gives up a couple of bad goals. Again, we discuss his play when we return right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle, to level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can always exactly find what you're looking for And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cordasco, Chris Golick reporting from Las Vegas. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every day. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. That is where you find the Chris and Chris show on Saturdays. And, of course, Fridays are WTF. And this is like WTW. Today, what the Wednesday? You didn't expect this hat, did you, Call it. Did you expect no. me to wear a hat like this? No. Unexpected. I did not expect that. Okay, so goaltending. Goaltending issues have been the story down the stretch. Aiden Hill overworked, underpaid. No, overpaid, overpaid. Uh, we know that. He gave up a couple of cheapies last night. Again, the one went off his shoulder. The other, he lifts his left skate up. Don't even, what he was so out of position. Um, again, inconsistent goaltending. That's been the story. Cassidy said after the game, we believe in our goaltenders. 
they got to believe in themselves. And VGK, now, what's missing? Well, a lack of timely saves when they need them most by both goaltenders. But last night, Hill, his shoddy play continued. All right, so Aiden Hill talking about some stats here really fast. In his last 12 games played, in his last 12 games played, he has been over a 900 save percentage, looks like just twice, if I'm reading this correctly. Three times, pardon me. Three times. The other thing I'm looking at are the number of goals given up in the last 11 or 12 games. There's a lot of really funny looking threes and fours and fives up there. He has given up two goals or less in the last, I think it's 11 games here, in the last 12 games, just once. Mm -hmm. Just once. So this is not, this is a shadow, an absolute shadow of the goalie that we saw during last year's Stanley Cup playoff run. And if we're going to go back, you know, we can talk about injuries and stuff like that. Well, Aiden only gave up one goal to the Edmonton Oilers coming off of his injury after the All-Star break. And then his next game after that against Arizona, where the Golden Knights do win that game as well, he's also a 909 save percentage. So unless there's something new happening with Aiden Hill, I don't think this is an injury thing. This is no. not an injury thing. It's mental lapses. It's just lack of skill right now. And goalies go through this. Like we've seen all, all goalies go through this. Like this is not this is not abnormal. Let's be clear about this. Just the timing of it is absolutely horrendous. And in my opinion, what's even more horrendous is the Golden Knights trying to give him all this time to get rights. When you have Logan Thompson there who entered last season, the Stanley Cup championship season as a starter. Hmm. It's getting interesting around here. That has been a goalie controversy all season long. People were doubting Thompson mostly earlier this season, wanted him out, wanted him traded. Then Hill, now he's stinking it up on the ice. Again, they're both in no man's land because they're playing more games, as you've pointed out, Chris Golick, than they ever have, right? They're starting more games than ever. And Cassidy said with Hill, um, you know, it's been a lot of third period goals. I think he's fatigued. I think he's beaten down. And I think because they're playing so many games, it's I could kind of compare it to this, right? It's like they're the UFC fighter who's been going three rounds, and now they're going five rounds, you know, and about. And that's when they get tired, those final two rounds or the final round. That's what's happening in my estimation. And again, one of the issues, bigger issue, bigger issue, if you will, as I wear my jester hat today on the show, one of the bigger issues is the fact that no one can stink and talk to Sean Burke, uh, you know, and ask him questions about the goaltending. One one message, one voice. Um, so I'll, I'll see your comments about UFC and I'll raise you the horse that normally is a sprinter going six furlongs and then has to go a mile feet? in two turns. A mile. Wow. A mile. The horse that has to go a mile in two turns in the process. And, you know, they're leading for three process. quarters of the race and they finish second to last. The process. There you go. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of things happening. And listen, maybe this is just maybe this is just Cassidy and Burke and McCrimmon and everyone, you know, being the mad scientists in the lab cooking everything up when I'm not cooking the books, Tony. It's not what I'm saying. They're cooking up this formula, trying to see what works. They know Aiden Hill going all these games wasn't a good idea. They know Logan Thompson going all these games in a row wasn't a good idea. So just maybe there's going to be they're going to solve the riddle, you know, when there's 12 games to go. Maybe Hurdle all of a sudden, who we are not even really talking about as of late, but um, Hurdle's supposed to be skating by the end of this week, early next week. So all signs lead to him returning possibly as early as uh, April the 2nd against Vancouver or possibly um, April the 5th, that Friday in Arizona, where me and Chris were making the trip to Arizona, I think, Tony. I think we're oh, going to make the trip cool. to Arizona for that game. So that'd be a good time. That'll be great. Uh, one, of the areas, person. one of the areas, too, of concern that we've discussed on this show uh, that you'll never hear Sean Burke speak about because he's not accessible, uh, rebound control. Again, you yeah. know, there's no rebound control by the goaltenders. They've both really struggled in this area. Uh, no, is, this the, 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 is this on the goalie or is this on Sean Burke? 
I mean, listen, let's also well, let's let's not stop short of giving credit to the fact that we're watching the National Hockey League here and we're watching the world's best hockey players on both sides of the ice. Goalies are going to get beats. They're going to get beat just at times because the other player and the other team makes a better player does something better like and that credit needs to be given and you know and that's also what the narrative was in last night's game the golden knights deserve better and stuff i I don't think they deserve better i think they there were some really good positives of last night's game but the golden knights got exactly what they deserved last night i think that needs to be clear but back to the rebound control and stuff sure that's a problem the positioning that's a problem aiden hill not deciding to play a puck off of a off of an icing where nick Hague gets beat that's a problem um, Aiden Hill letting that puck go off of just above, uh, just above, uh, the, the shield, just above the crest and it bounces into the net. That's a problem. One goalie going five starts in a row when you have two capable goalies. That's a problem. Look in the mirror. That's what we keep hearing now from the players. Look in the mirror. They don't say, I'm going to look myself in the mirror. They that's say, our new, look, That's our new narrative. That, that's the narrative yes. of the day. Look, look in the mirror. You're going to see me. This I'm going to look in the mirror with this hat on and go, why in the world? Look in the mirror. But they never say who should look in the mirror. So say you're pointing fingers without saying that you're pointing fingers. That's what I got out of the post game last night. So I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes, too. You, you know, Bruce Cassidy... They asked him about the inconsistencies last night. Okay, well, number one is what? Look at the man games lost, a lot of injuries. But this isn't Cassidy speaking. This is the front office saying we need to make some excuses, right? And then, and then he says everyone is shooting for us. So those are the two big excuses, not, what do we say? Circumstances, not circumstances for why this team is sucking here. And it doesn't matter to me who is in and out of the lineup. It's about the effort. It's about going after loose pucks, winning puck battles, and doing some things. When they, I'll tell you what, when VGK, I think it was in the second period, when their four check was on, when they were completing a lot of their checks, they were on. They were better, right? That's got nothing to do with either of those excuses, not circumstances. Cassie needs to look in the mirror as well. This is on Cassidy. This is on this is on the players. This is on everybody. This is not just a player doing one bad thing. It's not on a goaltender doing something bad. And honestly, when when businesses fail, when companies fail, it usually starts at the top. And that's okay. Coach Cassidy. I'm not okay. saying Coach Cassidy's getting fired. I'm not saying Coach Cassidy should be fired, but the talent's there. No, right. it's definitely. Not I mean, a Kelly McCrimmon. Kelly McCrimmon just took him from a Ford Escort to a a pretty nice uh, Tesla at the trade deadline. Yeah. Now he's oh, got to drive it a little better. Real quickly before we wrap up this segment, uh, so does LT go in the next game? I mean, all signs point to him. Gary Lawless didn't didn't even stop himself short of saying that it should be uh, Logan Thompson. It has to be Logan Thompson Thursday. Based on what Cassidy has said, it needs to be Logan Thompson. Everything points to being Logan Thompson. But if Sean Burke says Aiden Hill, it's going to be, it's going to be Aiden Hill. And I won't, I wouldn't like, it's the odds are probably about minus eight fifty max win dollar Chris Condos, but the odds are probably about minus eight fifty that Logan goes, but, I could see a situation where they run Aiden back out there to get him right because he's the $4.9 million man. Just a reminder for all of our fans tuning in, if you tuned in late today, that I am not an entertainer. I'm not a podcaster. I am a jester with a hat now. Coming up next, a bad stretch for Shea Theodore. The past couple of games coming up next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Get buckets with your first bet at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. No, I'm reading the wrong spot again. Let's try game time. Let's go game time. Take two. And we remind you that game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind. I am a jester with the hat. Uh, It gives you complete peace of mind with your purchases. Uh, Game time has deals on tickets right up until the start of every event, and even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats. And last night, I was perusing game time. They have some pretty decent cheap seats. 
uh, for the next VGK game. So you might want to check that out and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, use the promo code Locked On Golden Knights and Locked On NHL, I should say, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms, I'm not drunk, folks. Uh, terms apply. Again, create the account. And use the redeem code locked on NHL. We got it straight here. Locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are back on this rocky edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen every day. Thank you so much for doing so, particularly our everydayers. We really do appreciate all of you. Uh, don't forget Friday's WTF. Is, will this be a WTF topic on Friday with the Jester hat? I hope so. You you put a lot of effort in, and, and like twenty bucks, you're hard earned money. Twenty bucks from Amazon. Nice deal. I mean, it's actually made very very well. Good. One stitching. size fits all clowns, eh? Oh my goodness, it's hurting. It's it's starting to itch my head though. Of course, uh, don't forget Saturdays the YouTube exclusive. Chris times Chris. Shea Theodore, um, should he be benched? You know, I'm looking at his stats right now, and if I would have told you that there's a Vegas Golden Knight who has 15 assists in his last 13 games and probably averaging 23 minutes a game, you can't take that player out of the lineup. You can't. And that's what Shea Theodore's offensive statistics are and his ice time. 13 assists, 15 games. So, no, I, I made a, a very quick comment about benching him. But when you look at these stats, no, you're not benching Shea Theodore. End of story. That doesn't mean Shea Theodore needs to get a lot better, though. Um, I pointed this out in the game on Saturday against the or Sunday against the Devils. He is just getting beat at the blue line and his reads are very, very off. This is not a six, seven year veteran playing out there. This is the younger version of Shea Theodore in seasons one and two, where he was making some very poor reads at the blue line. And at times his skating ability could compensate for getting back in position. Well, it's not working in this game. Uh, I mean, Jack Hughes got behind him. How many times Jack Hughes is a great skater. Let's be clear about this, but Shea Theodore is a, should be a great defenseman as well. A dark horse Norris candidate with his offensive statistics, he can be right around. A, I mean, he's been right around a point per game player throughout this entire season. As a matter of fact, I'll bet he's right on that number, less his injuries. Uh, Shea Theodore's stats on the season: thirty-three games played, thirty-three points. So there you go. I just proved my own point. So Theodore, it's something at the blue line is just not clicking. His reads are off right now. And he's unable to compensate when he makes a bad read with his skating ability. So that tells me that he needs to wisen up a little bit, plain and simple. I don't know if that's the best, most PC way to put that, but that's what I'm watching out of Shea Theodore right now at the blue line. Once the team is attacking and gets the offensive stuff going, he's great. Mm -hmm. But as a defenseman, he's lacking right now. Does he need to look in the mirror? Do you think? Sorry, we got to continue that narrative. Uh, he did have the assist, though, last night on the Marshall Circle, goal, which is a pretty little apple there. That was a great goal. That's one of the best goals they've had all season. That was a, that was a remarkable goal. The situation was great. Everything was great about that goal. Um, a lot of out-of-position play. So you think that that's probably the biggest issue. This is nothing related to the injury. I can't even find an excuse, right? There's no excuse. No, he's here. he's playing bad hockey. Not, like in, well, and on one side of the was ice. A, it was back surgery, though, right? I believe that's what yeah. they said, but I thought they said back okay. surgery. Okay. I mean, listen, it, it's not. It, Coach Cassidy made the comment: once a player is cleared, they're cleared. He doesn't. He doesn't go with pitch counts. He doesn't go with you know giving them less time on the ice because they're coming back from injury. Once they're cleared, they're cleared. And by Shea Theodore's uh, game log here, I mean nineteen minutes, nineteen minutes, twenty-two minutes, twenty-six minutes, twenty-four minutes, twenty minutes. So, I mean, Shea Theodore was gone from November 22nd, came back February 20th. He had a string of one, two, three, four, five, six straight games with over 20 minutes of ice time. In his 14 games since coming, 13 games since coming back from injury, he's only been under 20 minutes three times. 
and that was 1853, 1959, and 1947. Hmm. Uh, you know, we now know, too, speaking of defensemen, that Zach Whitecloud is defenseman number eight, right? Because they yeah. inserted Hague ahead of him. So that again makes Hutton's gonna be tough to another, take out of this lineup right now. Hutton gonna make is gonna be tough to take out of this lineup right now. I thought someone like tripped up defenseman there in front of the crease last night on his goal, but in any event, that Which was one? A goal. on the Hutton goal. Oh well there were there was a there was a jailbreak there and um the Tampa Bay coach Cooper, he was looking at that to see if there's any type of interference. You just had bodies that like you said, bodies hitting the floor and however that terrible song goes, and that's that that's what happened right there. All right, coming up on tomorrow's show, we'll have a preview of our next game. Cassidy did like the flow overall of that contest last night. I did not, personally. I don't know. They gave up 20 shots to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Give them credit for for a good, a, a fair defensive effort for that. Okay. Um, as you know, fans, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Locked on sports today, you can catch it. And baseball fans, uh, today coming up at 4 o'clock Pacific time for the best Major League base, uh, Baseball season preview. It's coming up ahead exclusively on Locked on sports today. And again, it's 4 o'clock this afternoon Pacific time. Be the first to get local insight from the Major League Baseball local experts of the Locked on Podcast Network. Again, find it today, 4 o'clock Pacific time. Locked on Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel. It's only on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. We appreciate everyone tuning in. And for my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. Uh, it was a must-win game last night. Thanks for putting that on the slate, Chris. And should I wear Tomorrow, this hat must win ever game again? Seattle. Must-win game against Seattle. Should I wear this hat ever again? You should wear it until they win a game. You should wear the hat until they win a game. Is that how we're going to lift the curse? Yeah, and if they go on a 12-game losing streak between now and the end of the regular season, you got to wear it all summer, too. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Take care.